Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? And Nigerians, happy 54th Independence. Yes, sing us happy birthday. I think we have tried. 54 whole many years. Congratulations, Nigeria. We have a very exciting evening this evening. We have, it's the Women's Night, Women's Day. It's actually the woman's birthday. We are going to give this 54th year of independence to women, Nigerian women. And uh, we are so blessed to have one of the powerhouses in the house this evening, all the way from Nigeria, all the way from Abuja, all the way from the presidency. I admire this woman so much, and I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure there are so many women out there who want to be like this, our powerhouses in the house. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming her Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Sarah Jabril, the special advisor to the president of Nigeria on ethics and values. Thank you, madam. Thank My you pleasure. for honoring our invitation. Thank you so much for inviting me. We are so lucky here in Atlanta. Me too, to meet you. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Sarah Jabril, you know, your name rings bell in every household in Nigeria and is getting here in America because we watch you. NTA is here, and all we hear is Dr. Sarah Jabril did this for women, did this one for women, and now you are the special advisor on ethics and values. And my God, that is an issue that we must discuss tonight, especially as it relates to Nigeria. Don't you mm. agree? I truly agree. We need some education. Thank you. So, ethics and values, that's your desk. Tell us, what is the purpose of that desk? Why did they have a special advisor to the president on that platform? My sister Emilia, let me, on behalf of Nigeria, all of us, the growing women also, thank you for being here because you too, you are a powerhouse in the U.S. as the president of the American Nigerian Chamber of Commerce thank in you, Atlanta. Ma. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Great. So we are beginning to spring up on all sides. And I believe one of the things you are watching out for is the way we do a business with one another yes. properly. Yes. Developing the trust by applying ethics. We must, you started uh, mentioning about the presidency. The head of the presidency is His Excellency. Yes. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by name. Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, GCFR. Yes, he evolved a wisdom, a logical one, about the word ethics. As the first block for the foundation of his vision of transformation agenda. Yes. And that was correctly done. Because when we're talking about transformation, it's an issue of turning from negative to the positive or repenting from me mediocrity to excellence, from a sluggish development to steady but correct development. And therefore, we can only do that transformation he was hoping that we will be transformed mm -hmm. from our minds by the renewal, the renewal of our content, our conscience, our attitude, our definitions of what and what we do. Now, we're talking of ethics and values. Correct. Values is simply about the do's and don'ts, maybe from the family, from the schools, from the community, communities, various communities, all the way to professional areas. It also includes the faith, com the faith commandments. It also includes professional codes, as well as the Constitution, 
of a country. Now, having that thought inculcated into the minds of people, in taking such values, the way you behave, it becomes the correct way of doing something. Acting according to the right do's and removing the don'ts. Correct. In other words, it is the acting of the values that we call ethics, which makes good character. Ethics simply will beat it down to everybody, whether we speak English or not, that it's about good character. In Christianity, we just simply put it as righteousness. In Islam, we just simply say it's about Sharia. And therefore, what Mr. President has done is first of all even challenge the women. For him to make up his mind that a woman would handle this during his own tenure mm -hmm. means that he has put the whole issue of renewal of the character, the transformation of Nigeria's character and image and status everywhere in the world on the lap of the female gender. Okay. Right? Yes. Which includes all women. So the challenge of transforming Nigeria is actually on the laps of the, of the mothers, of the women, as confirmed by the psychologists, that the conscience of the human species must be taught, and particularly is the, it is the mothers, the mother that must teach it. So it's correct assignment on the right lap. And I'm so privileged to be the one to handle this at this point of time in our, the history of our country. Now, I, um, that is beautiful. I understand that Nigeria is a, is, a, is a beautiful country, is a huge country, and it's facing lots of um, ethical, should I say, limbo. Mm -hmm. If you hear, if you listen to CNN and some different things that we're writing, they're always attacking our, you know, Nigeria, the, the character of Nigerians. Um, you know, who and what we are and how we conduct ourselves in businesses, the 419s or what have you. Now, do you feel that this falls under your desk, ethics and values? Who, I guess indirectly it does, directly doesn't. Please help us understand if that does. It falls directly mm -hmm. on this desk. But I want you to take note that it's, it's when people expect good from you, most of the time, is where they tell you what is wrong. So much, not only our neighbors in Africa, that we have a lot of world wishers who are hoping and are wishing and praying for Nigeria to get it right because of the, of, of the bounty of endowment to Nigeria. And we are beginning to bask in the image of being an emerging economic giant in Africa and even in the world. And therefore, much is expected of Nigeria. And this is the serious part of it. Now, if we are being accused of having corruption in our dealings, etc., the first block of preventing or dealing with anti-corruption uh, uh, strategy mm -hmm. or the strategies is the issue of the ethics. It is the war room against the social cancer called Corruption. Corruption. And, it, and everybody knows that prevention is better than cure. So when you plant good character, uh, ethics in the system, or self-regulating oneself, self-disciplining oneself, and uh, 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 corporate self-regulation or governmental self-regulation, you are simply preventing crisis. I would just simply put it that ethics or good character is uh, or the, the absence of good character or ethic is the beginning of all crises. And we can list the crises. Yes. The crisis of disbelief, distrust, indiscipline, crimes, uh, conflicts, and particularly even the corruption, the sharp practices that breed insecurity. So Mr. President got it right by putting up the office of the preventive uh, 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 office and particularly if the World Bank uh, <laughs> describes ethics as a social cancer, mm -hmm. as a, a social disease, we keep repeating that. Every disease has its own mm -hmm. preventive measures. And ethics is the preventer of all the social cancer behavior. Okay. People's misbehavior, uh, or, which includes adult delinquency or juvenile delinquency. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this also, it also serves as the medicine or the antidote. Because you can only fix a situation when you correct, you remove your corruption or the sharp practice by doing it correctly. 
And therefore, it is not only just talking about Nigeria. Nigeria has a giantly responsibility, not only to herself, but also to other nations Correct. that are looking up to her. And people say that when Nigeria sneezes, many countries catch cold. True. And this is the sort of message that Nigeria will keep every citizen helped. And that's why we actually go to take our direction, Mr. President had done so, by referring us to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which, of course, is uh, Chapter 2, Subsection 15.5. First of all, tells every citizen that the system everybody has, the nation shall abolish all forms of corruption and abuse of power yeah. from all sectors, all, all levels and tiers. Yeah. Right. And the second is subsection 23 is talking about the national ethics, which is about discipline, about integrity, accountability, uh, social justice, religious tolerance, self-reliance, and patriotism. And this 20, uh, subsection 24 of that of the constitution of the chapter 2 is referring to the duties of the citizens. So we, it's a very simple assignment mm -hmm. if we choose to understand it. And it's common sense, a logic, that every citizen that is um, who enjoys being called a Nigerian or a well-wisher of Nigeria would apply their mind. That is the first patriotic uh, uh, assignment we need to do. Believing and accepting to do that the rules or the commandments or the constitution of Nigeria tells you to do. And what we're trying to do actually is to have it done, write it out. At the same time, we are going to do uh, some simultaneous thing. Teaching not only the educated, the elites at the top and so on and so forth. We must go back to the foundations. And yes. most of the people living at the foundation, the grassroots levels, are not educated. So the assignment we have actually is to make sure we, we interpret the issues of ethics, the constitutional provisions and demands or the standards, including the faith commandments, to the people at the grassroots that every child, whether or every parent, whether we speak English or not, we must realize that good character, inculcation of good char character mm -hmm. is foundational, is keystone to effective citizenship from the community from the, the time influence, a child is born yeah. from the schools the kindergarten mm -hmm. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. as well as as we grow into professions and where we are talking maybe from uh, top to the bottom or uh, the bottom up as well as horizontally it appears that everyone that loves nigeria will now get a copy of the constitution what is nigeria talking about and if we love Nigeria, everything said there that you should not do, if we do otherwise, it means we are sabotaging the development of Nigeria. You know that, that it's a constitutional breach to be lazy. It's a constitutional breach mm -hmm. to, do, to do sharp practices. Mm -hmm. It's a constitutional breach to do anything co corrupt, wherever we are, even from the housewife level or husband uh, level, farmer's level, to uh, all the levels in life. It is also a, a, a constitutional bridge for us to show evidence of, uh, uh, re, evidence of lack of religious tolerance or ethnic tolerance or intra or inter-religious intolerance. So we are talking about just being good, reshaping ourselves, reconsolidating the foundations of Nigeria. Correct. And surely mothers have the assignment on their laps. Yes. And I will repeat that. Yes. That's a giant task. This is a giant task. Uh, we have um, over 180 million um, people mm. in Nigeria. Mm. How are you um, sending these messages across? How are you working your office to send these, this very important message on ethics and values across? What are you doing? What are some of the programs that you've put in? Well, we first of all said, one, the pr f first premise is that we believe every human species has the capacity of reasoning, of course, logically. And therefore, we believe that every, you and I, we are teachable. Every citizen is teachable. We are changeable by information. We are developable. And even our environment, we are also transformable. With this 
optimistic and positive uh, premise. We now look at it and say, yes, when we disseminate information, your question is about how. how now, we know? believe Nigerians are really patriotically concerned. And we called for volunteers. And we're saying that this issue of ethics, it is a government policy on paper. To, actual, to actualize this, the Nigerians must take this as their own project. As the stakeholders, because they are the, not only being stakeholders, they are also beneficiaries of good uh, system in all the sectors. And we have volunteers. Some of them have organized themselves into what we call the foundation for the adv advancement of ethics and values. We have people who are partners for the promotion of ethics and values. We have the uh, quintessential women who are in partnership, who are out for business, international business, in partnership with us. But particularly, we have cooperative societies. Because the cooperative process is, is the, the least microeconomic process, legal process, that helps people to practically interact. When we put your money together to do business, it means you trust one another. It, 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 it helps you to work with each other patiently, it, it, uh, uh, to be faithful, to have goodwill. And for instance, if you are doing farming, you, do the work, you decide to ha where you're going to have the farm, what are you going to farm. And then you work the farm. You manage the farm. You harvest what you've planted together. And you, you sell, you make profit together. And you continue to do business together. And this is what everybody wants. And this is the way, actually, that Singapore overtook Nigeria. They measure that every citizen belong to a cooperative society. And when we do so, it means we are actually enlightening our people that, look, if you must have yourself realized, actualized constitutionally, you also need to learn the content of working together. The, when you're talking about coll collectivity, working together, team spirit, patriotic uh, service, or altruistic, mm -hmm. Honesty, politics, honesty, honesty integrity, all integrity and everything, yes. accountability. It is in the cooperative societies you learn this thing. And I'm hoping that the government agency will now realize that we did not veer off our summit. We were actually creating a platform that will help us to know that because we say we cannot be talking of ethics and values to people on empty stomachs, yeah. empty yeah. pockets, and unskilled hands or brains. This is what I'm saying to you is what we've been telling people, we we'll ask our volunteers to carry this message. The, the, the cooperative societies, the community, the community transformation centers yeah. or resource centers are the ways whereby w w they help us to carry the message. Okay, they serve good. as information depositories. And we now disseminate our, our, our uh, 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 information to okay. gather data and whereby we can measure the impact or assess the impact, are people responding? And eventually, when we are well established, that's what we'll be able to know. Where, which, why do we have so much crime in this particular area? What were the parents, the grandparents, and everybody else, the schools doing, that they have no real citizens that are law-abiding, that are more criminal than the other, uh, the, uh, the other community? Because we are hoping that since we have well over 20 plus cooperative societies, and they are spread in various communities, and they are beginning to realize, yes, ethics and values becoming a, a, a fashionable or patriotic right. world buzz these days. And we, we are coming in zones, etc., etc., so that people will now have the means of being kept busy okay. from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. When we are busy doing some good stuff, we don't have time to be in security uh, 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 nuisances. What, you can find everything you want to do. If it's farming, go on ahead. If it's... Uh, 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 learning little skills okay. go on ahead these transformation centers replicate what we have in the developed countries okay. like so every county mm -hmm. or every local government mm -hmm. is a replica of the amenities or facilities of, 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 of operating in the capital of the states or even what you find in the state is what you should expect what you find in Washington DC or New York these are sort of the facilities everybody is supposed to have and therefore, it is a very serious assignment on the part of politicians. Okay. The issue of ethics in politics. That was my next question. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, and it's an issue of altruism yes. is a fundamental value. 
because we decided we are going to represent the people. We contest to represent the people. We didn't go there to build ourselves into laws, inaccessible laws. We may be imperfect, but our goal is to build platform and raise, elevate people. Democracy is all about elevation of people. Are there any transformation centers as you have it in the grassroots, as you perfectly explained, you know, in the cooperatives and all the different centers that are actually sending out these messages, doing the training on ethics and values, I'm sure, just as you as have explained. Do they have such um, structures also for politicians? Because most of our ethical issues really are, yes, we have them in the grassroots, we have them in schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, you know, we hear all these stories where a young girl cannot get her grade because she has to sleep with uh, whoever, the professor, or what have you. These are all ethical issues. You have our politicians, ethical issues. Now, um, I'm hoping, and if, if it's not there, I'm suggesting. What you're doing at this grassroots that you just explained, I think is beautiful, where you have the resource centers where people are actually training people that are in the co-ops. Trying co to raise them. Raise, 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 them, yes. raise them this, properly. Yes. I think. The centers. And yes. The, and hopefully the we have them in the educational mm -hmm. sector. Uh, there's some serious ethical issues there. In the political sectors, there are some serious ethical issues there. I'm going to let you address that because there's one one main example I, that's a, that's an ethical issue that needs to be addressed, and I think publicly. But at, so my question to you, to make it simple, then is: Are there such structures, <coughs> entities, also to address the educational ones, to address the political ones, to address the um, regular businesses as well? In fact, on my schedule of duties, the first thing Mr. President wrote there is that we are supposed to advise him on how we are going to raise such moral issues in the polity. Okay. Number five of my schedule of duties mentioned about, you see, raising issues that will address the conscience of, this, of the citizens, raise issues that will prevent the crisis. Now, the issue of even politics, unfortunately, has been misunderstood. The definition is has been misunderstood by our Nigeria, even a lot of our African politicians. It, 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 there is a, a kind of evidence of obstinacy, of or deliberate ignorance, or, or neglecting just what politics is for. If politics is about this, the negotiations and talking about the power to elevate, elevate other pe people, altruistic heart, goodwill to the people, I think we are the, our business is to redefine to people for, to take to take no, let politicians know politics is about having the power to elevate other people including what we call the democracy the, the definition of democracy the definition of leadership the definition of governance or development the definition of development and this we will not give up i've told yeah. you we are teachable Good. we are transformable we are determined to keep on speaking, we must be resolute and resilient in the way we believe that Nigerians have to do. Because whether we do it or not, this is, we cannot escape the issue of ethics and politics. We cannot escape the issue of, of ethics in the way we bring up our children, which is the formal and informal education. Now, that's part B of your question. Part B of, yes. yes. Which is, now what we're trying to do now is to, in the process, the high level of collating because it, the issue, the word ethics, the word, no, the word civics, ethics, and mentorship are words that are, have almost been lost in our enlightenment educational system. We have the responsibility and duty for bringing the words back. They must bring back to the table, going back to the basics. So we're in the process of now calling our stakeholders to collate the various curricula, what is the content of who is teaching what about civics, at what level? What is the content of the issue of ethics? Is it ever being taught? How are the, uh, what is the content of what, or, or, or what is being taught? And even the is issue of mentorship, because this is a word that women say a lot about it. But I'm, I'm not too sure whether I heard this about mentorship in the political uh, 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 sectors. In the same, in the same that uh, uh, leaders are supposed to be shown what, Exemplary leadership. Yes, 
Yes. And to see the definition in practice, the issue of ethical, political will actually is the demonstration of ethical, resolute will. Political will is about ethical will to do that which is right. And if the politics of doing equity for people in development, in all the amenities, even the way we treat even the various sectors, these health services, the, the social uh, 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 services, everything, we have to accept that there is a gradation in the way human beings grow. Developmentally, the physics at what level, and then and the, the ethics as well as the mentorship, at what level. And then when we've done that round table to collate, we will now harmonize. So that everybody we hope will be on the same page. Mm -hmm. Mama and grandma, mm -hmm. at the, whether we speak English or not, please do know that your children and our and our grandchildren are, are living in this country. In this country, they have rules and regulations which they must follow if we must realize the good country we expect. And may we not frustrate you at the sunset of your lives. Therefore, let's now be reminded. Good character is fundamental. It really is. It and really then is. when we have this, we we'll now do our syllabi. The next stage is to have it translated in our local languages, which is a big project. The filmmakers also are being told. Another area we are thinking about is we will also raise an, in the, what we call the Institute for Civics, Ethics, Values, and Mentorship, which is being uh, headed by Professor Ogiami in diaspora. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking of ethics of business, you will also from diaspora yes. think of that. Now when we're talking about, the, we're also talking about the relevance of civics, ethics and mentorship in cultural issues in, 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 that affects the tourism, that also affects the type of education that brings about to welcome people, making the place safe for people to, to to, to, to visit, if people are coming for tourism and they are going to the grassroot areas where those uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, status are, are and they are experiencing in insecurity, they won't come. True. Now, if we have insecurity in the country, who is coming to do any investment? Okay. Now, this is where we are moving from the content of the home, the policy implementation of the government, as well, particularly of the politician. The politician must accept he or she is a political and social parent. Whatever you wish, and I will repeat this more than every time, a politician is supposed to be a, 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 an empathetic, sensitive, responsible, responsible, responsive person about the needs of the people. Okay, so w with that thought then, let me ask you, is there a provision where they're being taught this? before they even go into office, before they take this leadership? Are there these leadership um, courses? Do they even get oriented into these things before taking these offices? Now, you see, the first part of what we've been doing is to enlighten the people that, that ethics is indispensable to everything anybody, everybody's doing. We've been talking with the head of service and other areas. The next thing is for, for this office to have the recognition of having the funds. Because a lot of people just thought it was just one of these wave of political appointment. Maybe they didn't realize such deep, so profound and urgently critical to the direction and the policy implement, effective policy implementation of transformation. And was just, it, how did we come about? The, we can only transform by ethics and values. Okay. And we strongly believe that we have to take responsibility that it begins, begins for me and you. And everybody else. Yes. And we don't need to be paid. Right. We don't need to be bribed. Okay. And I'm asking now, uh, with our community centers and farms, we are beginning to talk to people that will partner with us. We raise funds. Government can help us. But if government is for us, by us, then it is possible for us to have committed patriots in this country to partner with us for us to start. And we're happy to have these centers and the farms some have started in the southeast. We just commissioned one in Anambra State by uh, Mrs. Uh, Rita Musu. We also have traditional rulers. But we are simply saying that these centers that we have should be so strategic that we have one in Abuja. The only way minister of uh, FCT has given us Abuja Garden. I hope somebody is not, will not go and snatch it. Okay. Right? And then we, have, have, we hope to have one in each of the six geopolitical zones as our teaching centers. 
And when you look at the content of that, you may have to look at it. it, it's, it, it, it these are crisis prevention centers, uh, uh, national healing centers by ethics and values, good character. And if it's indeed that, uh, that it takes a whole village to raise a child, yes, yes. which is characteristic of African culture, we are now modernizing, restructuring, systemizing the village teaching of children. That everybody will now know that you have responsibility, not only to yourself, your family, but even also to your community and the good traditions that we're talking about. Yeah. Knowing fully well that you are expected to operate not only in your communities, in the future, the communities, the country, the ECOWAS, the uh, African Union, United Nations, as well as other parts of, of, of the world, in all the dimensions, so that either my sister Emilia or Sarah or Shaibu or Solomon uh, uh, or uh, mm -hmm. right? Correct. The traditionalists, they don't have any reason to misbehave. Right. Nobody has any excuse to misbehave. They are doing so out of what I will call ignorance. And we may, we may as well forgive them because if they are acting out of ignorance, there must come a time that our ethics bill by private, that's one thing I've forgotten mm -hmm. to mention. Mm -hmm. Our young people have carried, with the help of FIF, carried a big private bill to the National Assembly. And we hope the legislators will also leave a legacy by enacting uh, the bills that will give the, the, this office the teeth and encourage EFCC, ICPC, and the SSS and other people to now shape up and for, them, for, for us to now tell us that there are certain people who have the impunity of, of, of just criminality. And they are left on the streets. And the question the office is asking, I saw some of our, my, my colleagues, is that why are some of these people on the street? Do you, do, do you have records of what they've been doing? Mm -hmm. And believe me, I am not sounding like, uh, like, like a, a, a political tigress. I am sounding like a mother, a co-mother in this country. That when we allow people who deliberately oppress people, they mis, 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 define politics. They misdefine economic equity or uh, uh, wealth uh, uh, sharing equity. Yeah, uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, they misdefine even the word politics. And they are left on the street. This, we are creating more negative mentors. Excuse me, demonic mentors. Mm -hmm. Than God-fearing mentors. Mm -hmm. And we have to be, accept this. And let everybody in the diaspora know. We are busy, God helping us even more than 24 hours. In the office, outside, and uh, in, I'm here now supporting the women. Correct. We are talking of the business with those of you here. And we can see the prospects. Meeting with you. And if we are doing that, it is the responsibility of the mothers of Nigeria to reteach conscience into the minds or conscience of Nigerians. And therefore, do I have apologies? I'm also, well, your name is Amelia. Amelia. Very good. My name is Sarah. So you do your job as you are doing, right? Yeah. Representing us uh, creditably. I should do my job as Sarah, mother of nations. And we should, not, we should have no reason at all. We must have a word said no, rebuke so that we can rebuke sharply. Nobody can be above the law. And after all, if everybody came forth our, our wombs, and this is one point I want you to remember. Nigeria and African countries and other countries, plus United Nations must learn now to respect and recognition the heart and the love content of women to humanity. The wombs of women that contain the first security chamber. Of course. Nat natural of the human right. species must be recognized and respected. Also, the blood the women have in them and transfuse nutrition, succor, yes. etc. in the womb. Yes. And at the point of delivery, the blood they let. These are <laughs> precious issues to be revered by anybody. And and also, our breast milk, that the whole world is celebrating. Oh, don't do give milk, but breast milk. But the, the, the producers of the breast milk, how are they treated? Mm -hmm. Are the government of the world treating women ethically? Fairly and ethically, yes. The people who are demanding that the girls should sleep with them, 
before they get great? Yeah. Are they human beings? Yeah. Or are they supposed to be the polluters, the pollutants of the, of the society? Or they are supposed to be purifiers? For people to decide to take pleasure in, in defiling, polluting, raping, and creating women, to making them as widows. And let it be known to everybody, my sister. Every human being that is maimed, hurt, or killed is some product of what a woman's womb. That's right. It's the product of her heart. It's the There's product. No argument yes. There, definitely. It's the product of her blood contribution. It's the product of her you know, breast milk contribution. Yeah. So we are now calling not only Nigeria, the world to now get back and get their consciences right about the essence of the woman being, the female gender. And may we not bring curses on ourselves, no. but disregarding the women's essence into, into in humanity by killing and killing and killing. Yeah. Women, do your jobs well. Let me ask you, and this is our, my final question in, in case some people want to dial in. I saved this one for last, and maybe you, I, I, we just need some correction. Yes. We need the right message to us. We here in the diaspora have been heard about um, the Senate passing a law that 13-year-olds now can be married. Did we hear that right? And what is behind that? If we're I talking think about ethics. That law, I am not too sure whether I've been very uh, attentive to that. I think we women rose and said if Nigeria is going to be a part of the United Nations Charter of of fundamental human rights or what is good for the whole world we cannot come to come up with our own idiosyncratic or sentimental uh, uh, issues uh, the argument we are put up is that no Senate, you, uh, the Senate, you cannot come with that law because a 13 year old girl she may be at the level of puberty but the, the, the 13 year old girl is still a baby a child is a child yes. and as we think is a sexual abuse it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's actually it's a pedophiles. Promiscuous. In this country, yes. you're put into jail for, yes. for um, having anything to do with someone 16 and under. So it's high time Nigerian, uh, African men or other men realize that they, they must have to show that, that they have some sexual promiscuity or, or, or discipline. That's right. And it, you do not come and tell me that, uh, that when a, a girl, 13 year old uh, mother, the baby mother, gives birth and she ends up with VVF. Then, if it is so, I think it appears that you, the people that created the VVF must be responsible. We are yet to get to the, 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 the higher levels of ethical constitutional regulations in that country. Yeah. Because this is the future. And if the world remains on, on raptured by the creator, we have assignments to do. So yeah. it is, I think... We raised the case, the Minister of Women Affairs and other you know, human rights actually raised the issues. And I think it, there was a stoppage to that. I don't think we had I, any I conclusion. I there really is, because that is very bothersome. And if that be the case, and if it's still in any platform to be considered, I actually would hope that it will be the top of the line, one of the priority issues to just yes. kill and drown, because these are your children. We are still and on that's it. one of my top ethical issues here. Please note so, very quickly, yes, note, yes. Nigeria is a frontline signatory to United Nations Human Rights Charter. Okay. Which okay. includes the rights you know, to for good health and so on as proper treatment, dignity of, 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 of life. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are, and we suddenly come with well, a kind of uh, archaic, idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic uh, issues, it means we are showing that we do not respect to our signatures at the, okay, at the world mean. level. Yes. And everything to do about women, about all these violences that are still going on, pouring of acid and running away and abandoning the mother and the women, it's all about people not accepting to pay attention to the dignity of the human lives that they so need as voters and labor force. And this hypocritical or this double standard that is going on won't help Nigeria or Africa or any nation to develop. So they, and the people don't want to be corrected. Yeah. But when they do something wrong, they want to run away to cover it up. They bribe to cover, to cover it up. Right. When you know what you are doing is wrong, why do it in the same place? Now the issue is, two th the, the issue is one. We are, our assignment, when we get said, is to address 
the effective parenting skill. Okay. Right? And the, the other assignment is to have the will so pump the, the heart with the conscience, with, with the ethics and values, the good character, that we will have the strength of the conscience to resist all these ridiculous temptations. Correct. Let Nigeria also know that in the Human Rights Charter, I'm going to give you a copy. Every paragraph of the Human Rights Charter has what? Has human conscience. Every paragraph that we all signed, it's all about respecting the human being, the human species. Yes. The hu uh, by which we are co-producers. By which we are co-producers. And we must take that. We must be so recognized. Even in the fear of the Almighty God. We still believe in the fear of the Almighty God. Yes. And traditionally, of course, they say a man is not complete unless he is married. A woman is not complete in the African culture that unless you are married. Then why is it that after you go into all the, 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 the ceremonies, happy ceremonies of getting married, people turn to what we call, what Dr. Onjoku calls them, that people who are neither human beings or animals are manimals. Manimals. <laughs> manimals. Yes. yes. And we just talk yeah. and talk and talk with all the, the patriotic lamentations. Yes. But simply the discipline, Acting, yeah. the discipline of doing good yes. is, the, is the challenge we're facing. But of course, we keep on praying and doing well, our jobs. We definitely have to. Um, I think um, you, you hit one very good point that effective parenting yes. and for, for a child effective parenting skills and enforcing that ethical and, and, and moral values into the child from yes. the time he's born yes. will now help him to resist all these temptations. May That's it right. be in brought from you know what they see. Mm -hmm. They see a lot of politicians doing whatever nonsense. They see our uh, medical people doing whatever nonsense. Mm -hmm. They see all the rich on, men and women doing whatever things, nonsense. The health services. And the health services. So, yes. So, um, hold on. I think you have a call coming in. Thank you. Thank you for calling Omega Studios. Oh, sorry. We missed it. I'm sure they'll call back. Let's see here. Okay. Well, I'm sure th they'll call back. All right. Okay. Yes. So, um, it's very important, and it's, but my biggest concern is, Every sector is very important as far as ethical and moral issues. Yes. May it be the parenting, mm -hmm. which we, uh, those things, oh, I think mm -hmm. they're calling back. Yeah. Thank you for calling Omega Studios. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy I finally got through. I've been listening to all you've been saying. My name is Winifred, and I'm calling from New York. Oh, very good. Good evening, mm -hmm. Winifred. Good evening. Um, happy <laughs> Independence Day and to thank you, you. And to our very wonderful guest. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question, if this is okay. Yes, go ahead. Your guest. Okay, um, Your Excellency. Yes, ma'am. I'm sister. glad you're around. Thank I'm you. glad you're here and telling us all of this. I would like to take you away from what you've been discussing because something has bothered me and I would like you to cast something for us on the cheap of girls. Situations. Yes, yes. How does ethics and value play a role here? And what have you done from your office um, concerning the issue of uh, this missing girl? Thank you. Thank you. Sharing the shock, the pains with everybody, okay. is what we also experienced along with Mr. President and the parents and the communities. I think. From what I said, if there was any respect at all for the woman species, why would it be the girls that will, go, will be abducted from the schools? It means somebody is showing the outright disrespect for the young mothers of tomorrow. But what I've done, I ended up in 
printing out a flyers to some people, not only to the Christians but also to the Muslims, what their faith commandments say about respecting human beings. And what, for instance, what uh, in Christianity, what Jesus Christ said that we must pursue uh, uh, peace, uh, seek peace and pursue it. And what the Prophet, what Prophet Muhammad uh, said to the Muslims that the, uh, that they are, Muslims are not to hurt Christians either by mouth or by hand. Okay. Yeah. So for the young uh, children and for goodness you say, coming from whatever country, because the, the question is, are these children Nigerian born children? Or where is the country that which, who are the people in what country that are sending these children to come and sabotage Nigeria's progress? Who is jealous of Nigeria? And the question I am also asking my sister is that what has Nigeria done to any African country but she, that she deserves to, uh, uh, to, uh, to be harassed by young people who don't want to, who want to believe that education was, is any worth to anybody? And also, for it means there was a lack of home training from wherever they are coming from. There is also lack of religious training from where, wherever they are coming from. There has been negative training or support in, in the process of wanting to sabotage Nigeria. Now, what did I do in my office? We have volunteers. We have an organization called the Center for the uh, 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 Promotion of Ethics and Values that is headed by Dr. Mercy Sokumba a former manager of the film industry uh, 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 federal Palestine state in Jos. And the issues we are thinking of is the uh, need assessment first to ad advise Mr. President or the groups as well as the need assessment or okay first of the state of, of, of the trauma of the girls. Of course, just being taken away from your home is, a, is another experience. Yes. And then the issue of of the rescue, the issue of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of rehabilitation, resettlement, and continuity in life. You have another call. You're popular tonight. Thank you. Thank you for calling Omega Studios. Hello. Hi. I'm glad I finally reached you. We tried for a while. Wow. Uh, my team, yeah. So sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. I figure you have a lot of um, callers coming in. Um... Well, I'm so excited, actually. My name is Irene, and I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Um, your excellent Zima, I'm so honored that she gets to actually see you, getting to speak with another powerful woman. Um, your work, actually, we're following your work, and during the time you had actually run for president, we were really proud that a woman finally took that step. So I want to say thank you, first of all, for at least letting us know that when we are slightly of age, we'll be able to do the same without any discrimination. And right? even do better. Uh -huh. Even do better. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to say once again, um, thanks for your courage. Um, and the issue of mentorship, actually, is something that I've actually thought of very seriously. Yes, okay. Um, which you had just mentioned. And um, I actually, I believe with you that if um, if, we, if more grown-ups or at least more successful women actually take on younger um, women or girls, it would take a long way. It's just like the old saying that it takes a village to grow a child. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very, very, we're very thankful that you're saying this. I'm hoping that a lot of other people are listening what you're saying and taking heed to this and taking it to heart. Thank yes. you very this much. Point, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and, and, uh, okay, one of the things we are going to help us do is to, to propagate this. Is can you create what we call Nigerian Community Centers in Washington, D.C. and get in touch with Sister Emilia here so we can exchange these ideas further? Absolutely. In the diaspora, Nigerian Community so Centers. If we can get her um, contact information, then we'd love to be able to set something up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, okay. Um, Is we'll there a website that you can give? Um, well, you know what? I will, yes, omegastudios.com. You'll get my information. 
Omegastudios.com. Yes. Got it. And let's, and let's get the Nigerian Community Center started. Like um, Her Excellency says, mentorship is the key to instilling some values and some ethics. Exactly. From, you have to catch them while they're young. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because one, once it's inbred, once it's in their blood, it's hard to leave. That's right. So um, thank mm -hmm. you, caller. We really appreciate your comment. So thank you. Thank you. We have to um, close in a few minutes, so I want to give you an opportunity to give us a last few um, brief words of um, wisdom as far as ethics and values are concerned. Now, it's ethical to think homeward, and I'm talking to our people in the diaspora. Okay. We want to congratulate some of you that have made it, you've earned or improved or learned a lot of, uh, gain a lot of knowledge. And we're asking, come and share knowledge with us, or even the technology. Right. It is ethical to share. It really is. When you don't come home and you are excelling here, and you don't have an environment in which to excel, it's peaceful for you. All you need to do is to please help us to continue what you are doing. Great, God bless you to get this message to Nigeria and other African countries from your media process and keep saying that we are not getting the right definition of, 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 uh, of politics, we are not getting the right uh, the definition of application of, of ethics and values and keep at it. Of course you know how to structure your, your criticisms uh, constructively. It may be hard, but definitely the self-criticism of ourselves is the, the first step of improvement. Improvement, absolutely. Uh, here and there. And definitely, I think we, we need to hear more because other nationalities here are very much close. Yes. And remember, we thank you. Yes. You contribute almost over $21 billion every year to our economy. You know, what is your social contribution? Yeah. The economic, yes, indeed. Thank you for keeping us uh, uh, fed, the relatives. But the issue of the big elephant called ethics that keeps the systems going all over the world. The best practices of ethics in all sectors, and I'll show you these all sectors in life as we have it. Give us that, and that is the partnership we need to have with you. So that we now start to have workshops, yeah, and we right. have opened the, your website, and so on and so forth, have interactions. But it's very simple. Just be obedient yes. to your faith commandments. Yes. Be ob obedient to the good culture that you have. Be obedient to... Your constitution, look for the one that you supposed to be. Just think good. Do good. <coughs> think ethics. That's right. Think and ethics. think transformation. And think developed Nigeria. And surely, you, our children and our grandchildren, and more. And so nice your mom is watching us in the studio here. Mama, thank you so much for being there. The, this is what we are doing. And we thank you that you are here. You are there as mama mentors, and we are going to fly high with high standards of transformation, not only in Nigeria but also Africa, and even teach the world that yes, indeed, women can only stop being slaves by raising the the banner or the hammer of ethics and take it to United Nations. How do we raise the human conscience contained in the Human Rights Chapter? If we, can only, if we celebrate dog bite day, I would not celebrate the work of women of teaching good character, of application of conscience to leadership in politics, in business, in professions, etc., etc. Good citizenship makes the prevention of all the crises we are, we, we, we are having today. Instead of doing more farms and food, we have more money to go and buy AK-47, which is not meant for mosquitoes. The AK-47 are meant for our children. Yeah. For how long are we going to wait back to see the essence, our, our biosocial essence contribution into humanity destroyed and abused or insulted? God forbid it. We are making it, and our girls are going to make it even much better. Thank you That's so much right. indeed for having me. You are very welcome. Thank like you. Like I said earlier, it is quite an honor to have you, Thank especially you, on the platform of ethics and values. And Thank I'd you. like to add, moral values yes indeed. and Thank thanks you. for delivering the message to us that says ethics has to start from the root 
but it's not too late, like Dr. Jabril says. It's not too late. Yes, we can start them from the time they are youths. Start to indoctrinate them, put it in their blood, make sure that they grow up with strong ethical background and moral values. But those that are adults or young or old who are still teachable, it's not too late to change. Because without ethics, our country is doomed. And we thank Dr. Jabril for heading that office. I know she's going to do fantastic work. And um, I want to give a shout out to Woman Power. And because this is given to a woman. Ethics I mean, power the is ethics soft power. power. That's right. Of the conscience. Our country is on for good things. Yes, Thank indeed. you so much. And um, we'd love to have you again. Thank and you. you know what? Maybe we'll do an ethics and moral values or ethics and values summit here. Yes, indeed. And we're going to invite Agreed. everybody. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. And yes. continue to watch Omega Studios. Coming up next, we have the quintessential women. Yes, women power tonight. And, um, well, have a great evening. Thank you.